A recent project in our office, I was tasked to assess the minimum foundation depth for nine new houses. With existing trees close to our proposed structures and also learning from the site investigation that we had clay soil on site, I knew there was a potential for volume change in the ground. So from the study of the arboriculturist report to see the species of the trees and also the NHBC standards, I was able to see what effect these trees would have on our foundations. So for each tree, I was then able to plot on a site plan uh, influence lines or rings at set distances that marked clearly what the minimum foundations needed to be in that area. This meant that anyone in our office was able to pick up this plan and interpolate what exactly the foundation depths were, which could then be later transferred onto our general arrangement drawings. With the Minor Works Manager comes with working with innovation, bringing in new products that come in to strengthen assets and strengthen concrete, for example. I worked closely with the project manager of this. It's a hydrophobic coating that's applied to concrete with reinforcement behind it. It penetrates the concrete by about 100 millimetres, goes into the concrete, and it prevents still reinforcement from expanding and blowing and failing the concrete. Example of failure on concrete will be concrete falling onto the track, causing delays to the line. We had problems with this, hence why I introduced the product. It prevents carbonation to the, to, and corrosion within the steel, so the reinforcement, and it prevents delays to the railway. In the workplace we find many engineering difficulties that we have to overcome. Um, particularly for me on site, I find a lot of uncharted utilities, underground and overhead services, clashes of works and designs um, that we need to overcome before we can start our work. In particular, on one of my projects, we found that the ground level was three metres higher than the design ground level. So we had to reduce the ground by three metres for us to divert a water main. The earthworks on the project was dependent on us diverting this water main prior to them being able to continue with their programme. So we decided that the best way to do it would be to use MGF trench boxes. The reasoning behind this we found was because we couldn't reduce the ground due to the existing water main crossing at one metre depth. So we had to go two metres below the existing water main before we could divert it. Uh, we were working alongside our site access, so we couldn't open cut because it, caused a da it would have caused a danger to anybody entering the site office. Um, and the trench boxes allowed us to provide a safe means of access for the guys to get in to install the new water main. Um, but it also provided edge protection for everybody accessing the site office, so they wouldn't be affected by our works. One of the recent projects in the office uh, was a redevelopment of a site in Stowmarket and we were appointed under a design and build contract to the contractor uh, as structural engineers. And the contractor at an early stage had asked for sketches and markups of span directions and load bearing walls and potential members that we needed in the structure to help with their pricing. So myself and the principal designer put together these sketches of the superstructure of the building so this helped the contractor get prices for materials, for cranes, for the size of the flooring, etc. But it also helped our design development uh, as, as designers. I believe as engineers that we can't dive straight into detailed design and it's good to do design development, have discussions and do sketches uh, so we can progress our design and take all factors into consideration. On a recent uh, project that I was on, uh, we were preparing a very a big uh, piece of temporary works. It was uh, a steel cover to, uh, for a big slab opening 7 metres by 5 metres, uh, which would be the support of uh, the false work for the uh, 700 millimetre thick slab above. So when the day came and uh, the crew started uh, the preparations, the supervisor realized that the space that he had to work between the existing walls and the position of the beams was not sufficient. 
My first action was to go back to the drawings. I studied the fault drawings, the structural drawings. I checked the dimensions of the space that we had. I checked uh, the possibilities of changing the fixing points, uh, the type of fixings. Uh, and by studying further the faultwork drawings, I realized that the piece of the faultwork was not directly connected with the rest of the slab faultwork. So that gave us the opportunity to reposition it a little bit on plan. So my quick fix was to position all the structure, the cover, the temporary works cover, the beams, the faultwork, the deck for the slab, a little bit on the offset from the original position. That gives sufficient space to the team to work and didn't affect the, uh, the strength of the uh, temporary works um, uh, cover or the false work, either the final construction of the slab above. So we proceeded with that uh, uh, solution and we didn't have any further issues after that.